Methods by which the communists might take us over, one would be by a peaceful coup d'etat, as in Czechoslovakia in 1948. The second method would be by fomenting civil war in this country and aiding the communist side with military might. But there is a third method which they are clearly relying on most heavily, and this is taking us over by a process so gradual and insidious that communist rule is slipped over so far on the American people before they ever realize it is happening. The process in that direction is going on right now, gradually, but surely, and with ever-increasing spread and speed. A part of that plan, of course, is to induce the gradual surrender of American sovereignty, piece by piece and step by step, to various international organizations of which the United Nations is the outstanding but far from the only example. But another part is the... All right, like he said, the UN is not the only example. Why? Because now, because this was written, the statement, the speech was made way back in 1958. So you can imagine how far they've come with this plan, right? So back then it was UN. Now we have... Uh, WHO, the WHO, right? And they have the WHO Treaty, which is that every government will surrender their sovereignty to the H, uh, WHO when some, you know, PDDemic goes down, right? That's how, that's what it is. So it is not a far fetched thing. He was saying maybe back then in 1958, people were looking at him crazy. Now look at it now. All that he's saying and much more has happened, right? And it's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. He mentioned about the Civil War. And America is totally divided with this whole border thing, right? It's been split in half. 25 state and 25 state is with the open borders, while 25 other states is against the open borders. What do you think that is going to lead to? Civil war. And they have that movie coming out this year entitled Civil War. And not only that, it is a biblical prophecy that this would happen. So this is the gradualism that they've been playing on the, uh, on the minds of the American people to achieve their aim. They've been slowly but surely taking away your rights, your so-called rights, because you don't really have no rights. You are owned by the corporations that own America. You are owned by the banking families. This is why you have birth certificates. This is why you have social security numbers, you know, ID cards, passports, and all that, right? Just to tell you that you are owned. You don't own nothing, going back to their famous slogan you will own nothing and be happy why because you already owned they own you <laughs> see what i'm saying we'll come back to this very very beautiful speech he gave and to think about how it was way back then you can hear the sincerity in his voice the urgency in his voice back then imagine now when a lot of people are so far detached from reality they don't even consider these things they don't consider it to them it's just you know it's all a joke until it starts happening right right in front of them, right? It says, uh, Psalms, the 64th chapter, and the first verse, says to the chief musician, Psalm of David, hear my voice, O power, in my prayer, preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. All praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachah Kodash, double honors to apostles and elders of great millstone who taught us this truth and continue to teach us this truth. Peace, salutation, shalom, shalom, shalom to all your brothers and sisters out there that are of the household of faith and to you brothers that are pushing this truth in sincerity and in honesty to you I say shalom, right? 
I was just watching that, man. I was thinking, man, like this was way back in the 50s. Now imagine how urgent this whole thing is. Imagine how far they've come in achieving all of this. I mean, what is practically left is the mark of the beast. That's what is left to tie this whole thing together, right? That's why we had to come up with a scripture talking about that is a, a clandestine plan to conquer you, to overtake you, to make you a perpetual slave. Like the uh, movie Matrix, you are a slave, Neo. You were born into bondage. That's what it is. A lot of people that were born, they don't even uh, uh, give birth to a baby. And the baby has no idea. <laughs> they are born into captivity. Born into captivity, you know? Born into slavehood. Slavelandia. Right? And you have no idea. Because your parents are already slaves. Walking their asses off. You know, so there's a, there's a, they have your, their devils, uh, meetings, right? So these are all the sick, like it says here, hear my voice, oh, my power and my prayer, preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. That's exactly what it is. It says, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. And the clip was, so, we just were seeing, or we're still about to go get back to it, right? It says he was listing a couple of things, the ways where the plans this in their councils that they've had to take you over, you know, to take everything over from you. He mentioned civil war, he mentioned he's going to go ahead and mention a whole lot of things which they've put in works to totally take everything away from you, right? So that is their plan. He says here, yeah, who wet their tongue like a sword? What is that? In their legislations, right? In, in, in their draconian measures. So this is how they, they use it to destroy, right? So it says wet their tongue like they sharpen their tongue, you know? So when they put it in writing, telling you you cannot do this, you can do that, or you cannot, you know? They are heavy taxations. So this is how they destroy you through legislations, through written words, right? It says, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. They're going back to the legislations. You know, the whole judicial system is aimed against you. And you, you don't even perceive it so. You see? This is why, like they said, the term above the law. So there are people out there that are above the law, but you are not above the law. Right? Or we know how. If what... Uh, was like the Epstein Island thing. If it was regular people doing that, guess what? They've all been under the jail by now. But because it's part of the elite people going to these places like this, guess what? No arrest has been made. You see what I'm saying? So this is how they use their power against you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Like they says here, the fourth verse, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect Suddenly, suddenly did they shoot at him and fear not. So they don't care. They don't see you. To them, you're just a goyim, right? You're just a, a livestock. <laughs> They're way above you, you see? They're way, way above you. What can you do? It says they encourage themselves in an evil matter, Agenda 2020, Agenda 2030, right? Event 201, I believe that's what it's called, Right? All these agendas that they have, this is how they encourage themselves in an evil matter, right? It says, the commune of laying snares privately. What is that? Your CBDCs, your universal basic income, social, uh, what is it with the whole thing that is happening in China? Social credit system. So this is how they lay snares privately. Right? To you, you might think it is all good, you know, universal basic income and all that, but that's a trap. That's a trap. And they say, who shall see them? It says, verse it says, they search out iniquities, they accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and their heart is deep. That's how they come up with all these things years and years and years ahead of time. Because your thought is deep. They, they know how to uh, 
think about it and then perform it gradually, gradually. You see what I'm saying? And you wouldn't even see, no, you know, just like the frog that is being cooked in the, in the water, right? That's their gradualism. Because if you put a frog in the hot water, it jumps right out. But if you put the frog in the cold water and you gradually increase the heat in that cold water, it will just stay there till it cooks. And that's exactly what they're doing to the American citizens and uh, eventually to the whole planet Earth. Because that's the globalism part of it. The conversion of the United States into a socialist nation, quite similar to Russia itself in its economy and political outlook, before police state enforcement is ever introduced. The best way to explain the aim here is simply to quote the directive under which some of the very largest American foundations have been secretly but visibly working for years. This directive is so to change the economic and political structure of the United States that it can be comfortably merged with Soviet Russia. Now here are the communist aims for the United States. One, greatly expanded government spending for every conceivable means of getting rid of ever larger sums of American money as wastefully as possible. Two. Yep, get rid of the American money as wastefully as possible. And how are they doing that? By funding all these phony wars, right? The war in Ukraine. How many billions of dollars did the Americans send to Ukraine? It's all done by design. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? It is every single one of these things are done by design. The wars going on in Gaza between Israel and Palestine and all that. Who is funding these wars? America? You see what I'm saying? So they're trying to get billions and billions of dollars wastefully. Because at the end of the day, they're trying to do away with the physical cash. Everything has to go digital. So it's all about waste, waste everything. Till the system cannot support it anymore. It has to crash. That's that economic collapse. So you get to a point. They keep printing on this money, keep printing and printing and printing and printing to the point where the system has to just overload and crash. It's all done by design, like you heard him say. Wasted as how you see fit, right? Going on. Higher and then much higher taxes. Three, right an taxes. increasingly unbalanced budget despite the higher taxes. Four, wild inflation of our currency five government controls of he mentioned about inflation right back then in 1958 what you would buy with a 20 dollar like you buy a whole slew of groceries with 20 dollars you can't do that now can't even use 200 dollars to buy full bag worth of groceries man so you've been in inflation, it's only going to get to a hyperinflation. So this is all done by design. Imagine, this is 1958. It's not as bad as it is now, back then. So you can imagine how we're living through hell. Basically, we're living in hell. Right? That's what it is. But a lot of people don't even know. They don't even consider. They're more interested in catching the games and, you know, Celebrity gossips and all that. Meanwhile, a lot is going on and been going on. Prices, wages, and materials supposedly to combat inflation. Six, greatly increased socialistic controls over every operation of our economy and every activity of our daily lives. This is to be accompanied naturally and automatically by a correspondingly huge increase in the size of our bureaucracy and in both the cost and reach of our domestic government. Seven, far more centralization of power in Washington and the practical elimination of our state lines. There is a many faceted drive at work to have our state lines eventually mean no more within the nation than our county lines do now within the states. Eight, the steady advance of federal aid to and control over our educational system, 
leading to complete federalization of our public education. Nine, a constant hammering into the American consciousness of the horror of modern warfare, the beauties and the absolute necessity of peace, peace always on communist terms, of course. And ten, the consequent willingness of the American people to allow the steps of appeasement by our government which amount to a piecemeal surrender of the rest of the free world and of the United States itself. In summary, gentlemen, we are losing, rapidly losing, a Cold War in which our freedom, our country, and our very existence are at stake. And while we don't seem to know we are losing this war, you can be sure the communists do. There is just one thing, only one thing in the whole world which the communists fear today. It is that despite their tremendous influence in our government and over all of our means of mass communication, the American people will wake up too soon to what has really been happening and what is now happening right under their very noses. The only thing which can possibly stop the communists is for the American people to learn the truth in time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You should know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. But it's safe to say that American people, ignorance is a bliss to them. <laughs> I mean, way back 1958 till now, a lot of people don't even know about speech like this, that it exists. You see what I'm saying? So they've... They've succeeded in this plan because just very few people are awake. A lot more people are in a comatose state, dead from the neck up, and they would rather have it so, living in their bubble, right? They don't want to be, uh, you know, to destroy their comfort zone, right? They, they love that bubble, you know? They will do anything to uh, protect and live in that bubble, right? To live in it. Hence why, you know, the movie with uh, Matrix, Matrix says a whole lot, man, right? The people that are so dependent on the system that they will fight you to protect their stay in the system, right? That's, that's a lot of the American citizens here. So, you know, when you're saying about them waking up and realizing the truth, well, only just a handful of people have, and the majority are still in that sleep state, you know? sheeple and they would they would rather have it like that man and here is the uh, the whole thing right from one to from the first one to the bottom and one of the ones that really right like the sixth one it says greatly increase socialistic controls over the economy daily life activities and a huge increase in of overall government overreach right so the government is constantly encroaching over your daily lives man and everything you do your economy you know the economy everything right big brother is always watching you <laughs> they have cameras all over the place they're telling you what to do what not to do with your life and everything who to support right now all of us have to uh, uh accept the alphabet lifestyle right you know the the, the uh transformers now we all have to accept it. Because why? Because the government says so. You see? That's what they push. And through hate speech, they, they, they deceive you into thinking, oh, man, you know, you know, you know, hate, hate, hate. You have to hate something that is evil. Like the scripture says. Let's get there real quick. I believe it says... Mm. Yep, this is Psalms 97 chapter in the 10th verse. It says, Ye that love the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints, he delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. You see what I'm saying? So you have to hate the evil. And by doing so, the, the Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, will preserve you from the hands of the wicked who make all these plans to destroy you, to destroy everything you love, right? But you have to hate the evil. 
it says here, there's the one I was thinking about, Amos, the fifth chapter and the 15th verse. It says, hate the evil and love the good. So there's no wrong with you to hate something that is abominable. You know? Having a, having a mo teach your child in school, you're supposed to hate something like that. Have these degenerates coming to teach you, wearing, you know, looking all... You, you see them in schools, right? Look the way they look. Drag, you know, they call them, you know, the drag cues, right? Teaching your kids. You're supposed to hate something like that, man. Thus say the Bible. It says, hate the evil, love the good, and establish judgment in the gate, which... They don't uphold it. America claims to be a God-fearing country, but look look at the way, look at its actions. You know, you can see, you can talk all the talk, but your actions proves otherwise, right? So they, they don't establish judgment in the gate. True judgment, that is. It says, it may be that the Most High God of the hosts will be gracious, you know, to the remnant of Joseph, you know, going into the Israelites. Joseph being in uh, Ephraim right, right now. So it was actually this uh, this verse is talking about Israelites, especially Joseph. Joseph is interchangeable with Ephraim because Ephraim became uh, the the house of Joseph, right? Ephraim being being one of the sons of you have Ephraim and Manasseh, right? The, in in this present time, they say you're Puerto Ricans and you're Cubans, right? So, but I had, I had to get that because if they hate the evil, you have to hate the evil. You cannot just co-sign your, or trying to be uh, neutral. Nah, man, you have to choose a side. You either, you either against evil or you love it. You see? It says, uh, yep, you know, seven far more centralization of power, including elimination of state lines, creating a completely federal governance. And that, Right there is what the you know with the globalization, which will extend over extend not just to America but to the whole wide world. Hence, why the mark of the beast is necessary. Hence, why the uh, CBDC or programmable money is necessary. Because once they do away with currencies all throughout the world, now money will just be digital. Guess what? They will have total control over that. You see, total control over that. You see, it says. Uh, Right? Eight verse. It says, continue the steady advance and increase in control over the education system. Like I was saying earlier, they're teaching your young ones in school that it's okay to be a cat. It's okay to be a dog. It's okay to be all kinds of animals. If you're, if you're a boy, it's okay to be a girl. If you're a girl, it's okay to be a boy. So this is how they do. They control the... Instead of them teaching them algebra and uh, agriculture, biology... And things like that that is very essential, you know, to the education system. You see what I'm saying? They don't. They rather teach them to be a flamboyant, you know, rainbow out there, just out, you know, living in a fantasy world. You see what I'm saying? So that's what they do. And look at it. Back in 1958, they had all this planned out. Now you see why it is the way it is right now. Because nobody put a stop to it, right? Nobody was in outrage. A lot of parents have been defeated. Their minds have been conquered. They go along with this bull crap. You see what I'm saying? A lot of parents, they're the first one to say, oh, he, since he was born, he's always felt like a little girl. You see, a parent shouldn't say some whack, but their minds have been, you know, uh, controlled. Like I say, mind control to think like that. You see? There's a constant hammering into the American consciousness of the horror of modern warfare. Promote peace, <laughs> that's why right, quote unquote, but only in a communist terms. That's why the scriptures talks about when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh upon them. Right? The turn one is create an apathetic society. So, you know, you can go through all of this, and that's exactly what they do with the higher taxes and you know, increasingly unbalanced budget despite the higher taxes, right? Even though they are taxing you like crazy, but then they wouldn't uh, increase your wages, right? They wouldn't do that. With all this happy inflation, a lot of taxations, your your, your wages are still the same. That's crazy, man. I mean, they've, they've practically accomplished all these plans. What is now left is 
uh, that karagma, that mark of the beast. That's all that is left. And once they do that, guess what? There will be a cut and call on the on the wicked ruling, right? There will be a cut and call on all of that. America will have to go down. Oh, I'm good. This one. So this has to be the end of Babylon. Let's get this one rather. Jeremiah, the 51st chapter, in the 8th verse, it says, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Like it says, uh, there are plans to destroy America. So this will be the uh, uh, the end game right here. You know, once they've accomplished all their diligent search, all their agendas, guess what? Babylon will be touched. And what is the modern day Babylon? America. It says, uh, Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm, take balm for her pain, if so be she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. So all anyone telling you that America will be great again, they're lying to you. According to Bible, uh, biblical prophecy, that is never going to happen. Nobody telling you that we will build back better. Guess what? They are lying to you. It says here in the ninth verse, we would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. And let us go everyone to his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto the heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. So that's what it is right there. So all the uh, atrocities that America has committed to its citizens, especially to the, uh, to the true biblical Israelites, guess what? It has to be judged. It has to be judged, man. America has done a whole lot. America has a lot of blood on his hands. Even uh, President Trump said that. <laughs> you know, America has a lot of blood on its hands. And the only way to uh, uh, rectify this whole bl bloodshed is by America totally annihilated. It has to be totally destroyed. Like it says here, Babylon is fallen. It has to fall. You know, it has to go down, man. It really do. It has to go down. And if you think any differently, guess what? You more than likely will go down with Babylon. You know, you'll go down with that ship. And with that, all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukhah HaKudash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. See you next time, Lord willing. Shalom, shalom.